There's a surprising new study that finds, despite what you may think, living in large cities can actually predict lower rates of psychological depression. The study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences was led by University of Chicago researchers. Mark Berman joining us now to tell us more about what they learned. Good morning to you, Mark. Good to have you this morning. I have to say, when we first heard about this, we were all shocked. So when you think of big cities, you think of traffic, high crime rates, a lot of people hustle and bustle trying to get around fast. This would seem to be a recipe for stress and depression, but your study was surprising. Tell me what you discovered. Well, we discovered actually just the opposite, and a lot of us had the same kind of intuition that so many others have, that cities are just so busy and stressful that that's going to lead to worse mental health. But actually, when we looked at the data, we found just the opposite, that actually as cities get larger, you get less depression. And we think that's because in cities, um, you have richer social networks, you're connected to more people, and that can actually buffer people against depression. Interesting. So the more people mean the more relationships. I'm curious what the purpose of this study was initially and why you guys decided to pursue it. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting question, and there, some of our colleagues, like Luis Betancourt at the University of Chicago, has looked at other things like how innovations or patents um, kind of increase in their proportion as cities get larger. So you get sort of increased innovation, increased wealth as cities get larger, and he thought that that's driven by increases in social networks. So then we wondered, well, could that actually have some mental health benefits as well? And it turns out that it does in terms of lowering the incidence of depression. Okay, so the study focused on depression, right? So why did you find that it's worse in suburban settings? Is that the lack of more relationship possibilities? Or kind of what was the core of that? Yeah, that's exactly what we think it is. We think that it's harder as you kind of move into smaller areas with less people, it's harder to make more social connections and that those social connections, connections actually can buffer against depression. And in a big city like Chicago, um, you're going to be interacting with more people on a daily basis. You're going to be forming more relationships, and that can actually have mental health benefits. So I'm wondering what else you can take from this study. Does it mean that the city is more relaxing than the country? Does it mean that the city is a better place? To, like, what else can we take from this? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. So one, you know, cities have kind of taken a beating lately uh, because of COVID, and, you know, for the same reason why we're finding that cities are good for mental health cities are also bad for the spread of COVID because everything kind of spreads faster in cities. So ideas spread faster, but so do diseases. And I think that's kind of had people thinking, well, maybe cities aren't so good after all. And I think what our study is saying is, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's still a lot of really good things about cities and kind of counterintuitively, at least in terms of depression, they can actually be good for mental health. Um, you know, that's a little bit different than, you know, stress or happiness. Uh, this is about clinical depression, and we mm -hmm. find that clinical depression uh, per capita is actually lower in larger cities. Okay, so now that you have this information, what is your goal? What do you hope to do with this uh, in the future? I think a couple of things. I think one thing in our study, we're kind of treating cities as sort of one thing, um, but there's a lot of variation within cities. So not all neighborhoods in Chicago are kind of equal. Um, and for example, some neighborhoods, it's a lot easier to get to other neighborhoods or to get to other places in the city. And we think that those neighborhoods will have less depression than other neighborhoods in the city that have less connectivity to the rest of the mm -hmm. city. So I think it's important now to drill down within cities and say, okay, which neighborhoods have lower or higher incidence of depression? And can we figure out what's causing that mm -hmm. um, to try to bring in the neighborhoods that are kind of more isolated to get them more connected to the rest of the city? Yeah, this is so important too now, especially at a time when the depression rates seem to be at an all time high because of the pandemic, uh, pandemic that is. Okay, so if people want more information. Where can they go to read more about this? So they can go to uh, our lab's website. That's enl.uchicago.edu. Um, the article is also freely available at the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences website. Um, you can also reach out to the University of Chicago and their media relations, and, and we can get in contact with each other. Mark Berman with the University of Chicago. What an interesting, unsuspecting study. Who would ever thought? So we appreciate you coming on and sharing this with us. Thanks so much for having Have me. Have a great day.